Hi, this is Karen Inglis and welcome to my talk for Indie Recon about self-publishing and marketing children's picture books. Before I start, just to tell you a little bit about me, um, here I am, here's my author page on Amazon. I thought this was a good place to show you all my books in one go. Um, as you can see, I not only um, have self-published children's picture books, but also fiction for slightly older children. So The Secret Lake uh, is a time travel mystery for ages 8 to 11. Um, I, I self-published that in 2011 and it sold about 6,500 copies now, perhaps a bit more, um, just half over half of those in print. Um, I've then got Eek the Runaway Alien, that's for age 7 to 10, and again that sold probably about 1,500 copies, almost all of those in print, a few on Kindle, not so many, but it is available on Kindle, complete with black and white illustrations. Um, then Henry Haynes and the Great Escape, that's for ages 6 to 8, that's a chapter book, which again sold very well at my school events, um, and again fun with black and white illustrations throughout. And then we've got Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep, which is my picture book, which is really sort of the focus of where this presentation has come from. I've blogged a lot about self-publishing for children's books over on selfpublishingadventures.com, uh, so you you'll be able to find out more at the end of the presentation about that. Um, you will also see that I created a colouring book version of Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep. Um, that was because my uh, illustrator was able to quite easily reproduce the images just in black and white and I thought well why not create that uh, colouring book and that's only really available on Amazon to order um, as, a, as a sort of an additional um, product. Um, and then uh, I'm now working on another picture book uh, which I will bring out sometime next year uh, only to sell though in school events uh, but I'll be talking about that uh, the, the reason for that uh, in the coming slides. So anyway there's a little bit about me and you can also find out more over on selfpublishingadventures.com or for readers karenenglisauthor.com. Okay, so I'd like to start the talk today with some basic picture book facts. Uh, and the key ones are that if you are thinking of self-publishing a children's picture book, it's important to understand that the most sales you're going to make and the highest returns you're going to make are in print at events. And by events, I mean mostly school events, but also local bookshop, si bookshop signings uh, if you can get into your local bookshops. Uh, that means that in turn, A, you need to be prepared to work in print and secondly to, to order in stock to take out with you to the events. You will of course also be able to sell your books online through Amazon and other online stores but just really to be aware that uh, volumes of sales of children's picture books in my experience from online are much much lower than face to face. They're much harder and also in, in relation to ge general children's fiction they're lower. Uh, it must just be that parents looking for picture books are using other means to find them. Um, the good news is that provided you own the copyright to your uh, images, you'll be able to reuse those to create ebooks and even book apps if you want to. And there's some exciting tools around that can help you do that. So that's great fun. Um, but equally be aware that discoverability is a challenge. There are a lot of ebooks out there, a lot of book apps out there, and parents actually don't necessarily know how to find them. Um, but that's something that we'll come on to uh, right at the end of the slide presentation. Okay, uh, so on we go to our next slide. This first slide just shows you uh, what I mean about sales volumes when you go out and do face-to-face -face events and particularly schools are the place that you're going to find that you'll sell most books or events where children are. So as you can see, I mean Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep, Sleep in print, I've now sold uh, probably about 480 copies in all. I could have sold more had I gone to more schools and done more events. It's really just down to how often you go out uh, and meet children. But as you can see here very clearly, school events I've sold 420 bookshop signings that's where I've arranged to go in and sit there um, take along and set up a table I've sold 60 general bookshop sales in other words bookshops which are stocking my book uh, on consignment uh, in other words sale or return probably only 10 to 15 um, and then online through Amazon and other places 25 so hopefully those statistics speak for themselves in terms of how you're going to sell most of your books 
this next slide also shows you how going to school events uh, is more lucrative uh, because in fact you make more uh, per sale. So as you can see on the left there, when I take Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep into school events, I can make either £2.64 or £3.64 per sale depending on what I, uh, what price I put it at. I often, at, in fact, at school events give them a £1 discount. Um, so I tend to make £2.64 a copy most of the time. Uh, by contrast, if I take the book from my own stocks and take them into local bookshops, such as Waterstones, which uh, require 40% discount, or my local village shop, I can make either 84p a book uh, or £1.19 a book. Um, the bookshop indirect, by that I use, uh, by I mean uh, gardeners, wholesalers, and they want a 50% discount, and my sums tell me I make 14p a book. I think I've got that right, and if it's not right, it's very close to that. It, it's next to nothing um, because my production cost is £3 something, uh, and the retail price, as you see, is 6 99 and by the time they've taken their 50%, uh, I get next to nothing. Um, Amazon Online, now that's print on demand. And in my case, I use Lightning Source, so I do for most of my online, and there the return I get is 60p. It's slightly different from Amazon because I use Create Space with them, but I don't want to confuse matters. I mean, the main story here is that selling direct and not having a middleman going out to your uh, schools is where you're going to make most of your money. So I hope you've got that message by now. Just to add a couple of um, tips before we start on, on more on the marketing side, I'm, I'm not going to focus this presentation on how to write a picture book, but, but just wanted to refer you to a few um, links and tips. So 32 pages is the norm for print picture books. They can be any number, of course, with self-publishing. You can do them any length you want. 24 is a another common, although less common, um, length. Um, I would probably say stick with 32 pages if you can or close to that just because it's a tried and tested length certainly I wouldn't go any higher than that and 500 words up to 500 words is the optimum number um, you can go some picture books do go up to a thousand words but again I think you might start to lose your audience if you're making the picture book too long uh, in terms of your page size, that varies. Um, I would suggest you go out, look in your local libraries and bookshop, decide what size suits you, uh, but also check that the printer that you're using, and that might be Ingram Spark or Lightning Source or Amazon or whoever you're using, or you may be using someone directly, just make sure that they supply the size of um, uh, page that you are using. Um, that you want, as it were. And so, in fact, if you're using Ingram Spark or uh, Lightning Source, you may be slightly restricted uh, in those sizes. Whereas, if going direct to a digital printer, um, uh, sorry, going direct to somebody who does litho printing, as it's called, um, you've probably got any choice you want. So that's the second point. Um, the next point is that in order to plan your picture book story, you need a bird's eye view of where the story is going and how the, it's going to flow over the different pages and run with um, run with the illustrations. And to do that, you use something that's called a storyboard. Uh, you probably know all this, but this is really for somebody who's here um, thinking about doing a picture book for the first time. So you'll see there, there's a link to my blog, selfpublishingadventures.com and you'll find more there about how story temp where you can find story templates. I, I've got a blank one that you can download. I also show you examples of how I worked with a storyboard template. In fact, the next slide we're coming on to will show you one example of that. Um, also on my site, you'll find links to tips on writing picture books uh, that others have written on their own sites uh, far better than I could have done. Um, so, so that's that for this slide. Just very quickly here, uh, staying with storyboards, um, I wanted to quickly show you just how I planned my um, flow of images with Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep. Um, you don't have to be somebody who can draw at all. Um, so you can see here that all the red writing is where I was imagining 
where I wanted pictures and what might be happening in those pictures. Um, another way you can do it, of course, is to sketch little stick men sketches there if, if you know if you want to. But what this does, the reason I wanted to show it to you really was it gives you a view of what the flow will be like and particularly then you can see very quickly where you think uh, it might start to get a bit boring because there's too much text or uh, where you feel you want to mix images in with the text or where you might want text on the opposite side of the page to the to the um, uh, to the image. I haven't done anything as sophisticated in my books as flowing the images right across two pages but um, if you're very artistic uh, and have lots of know-how you'll no doubt uh, be able to do that as well. Um, so that's that. Um, you will also see on numbers two and three there um, I've got a collage so you can often use those end pages um, which that may not be the right technical word for it but those early pages before the story starts to uh, put in some fun images which might relate to the story but they're not actually part of the story um, and at the end you can see on pages 30 and 31 um, I've got their placeholder for promoting my next books or maybe talking about links to the ebook version or the book app version um, but again if you go over to my website you'll see all of this in some detail okay Having looked at picture book basics, I now want to talk about um, costs, pricing and profit. And this is something you do need to think about seriously if you're going into self-publishing picture books for the first time. And the costs that you've got to take into account uh, are broken down into three key areas. First is illustration, of course, unless you're doing the illustrations yourself. Uh, the next is layout and formatting. Uh, I'm, and by formatting, I mean to create the print-ready PDF files that you need to upload ready to go to printing. Um, the layout side of that might be done by the illustrator. It will just depend, or it might be done partly by the formatter. Um, and then lastly, you've got your print and production costs. Now, in terms of setup, uh, Ingram Spark offers that for free if you then place a book uh, an order for books of 50 or more this is at the time I'm doing this presentation that may change from time to time lightning source I think is a $37 um, set up and create space is free and then there are certain charges for if you amend proofs but you'll need to look those uh, prices up yourself but none of them is prohibitive put it that way um, although Ingram Spark is certainly better value than Lightning Source so you need to take that into account and then for your actual print runs you then need to work out how much uh, each unit each book is going to cost to print and you do that using calculators which are supplied by the different companies on their websites which again we'll talk about in a moment um, or you can go and get quotes separately from short run digital printing companies or companies that provide offset quotes again we'll come on to that in a moment Okay, so if you need to get a quote from an illustrator, obviously you need to know how to find one. So uh, here I'm listing some sites there where you can search for illustrators um, by style, by medium, um, by which country they're in. Um, there's a range of sites there, um, all of which you can try. Um, and you can also, of course, look at the children's books that you like and see who's illustrated those and try googling those artists. I'm sure you will find an extremely wide range of costings and it will just depend on how experienced and how busy the illustrator is and whether or not they have an agent. Um, in terms of ownership of copyright that's something you're going to have to clarify with the illustrator. It's a bit like authors, they own their copyright unless you um, buy that copyright from them or I think think you can also arrange to license the, you, the, the copyright from them so that you, you're allowed to use the illustrations under certain conditions. So you need to get all of that in writing. I mean, I personally pay my illustrator by the hour and I own all the copyright, but that's something you'll need to, uh, to negotiate with your illustrator. Um, some people have asked me before about whether perhaps they, uh, royalty shares ever work. 
my understanding is um, not many illustrators would want to do that because the chances are that they would put in a lot of work yet children's book picture book sales are notoriously low volume so they could stand out to lose quite a lot uh, if, if they went into such an arrangement with you but that's something you need to discuss um, so hopefully those sites will all be of use to you and SCBWI by the way that's the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators and they have chapters uh, in the United States in the UK and elsewhere um, if so if you google them you'll, you'll find uh, the one that's closest to you Okay, so that's how you go about finding an illustrator. The next cost you've got to think about is your formatting uh, costs. Um, now your illustrator, depending on how experienced they are, may be able to help you with the layout that might be part of uh, the work they do with, with you. Um, I have to say that I just received the artwork from my illustrator and then I played around on a Word document uh, which feels quite crude I know but that's how I did it uh, to work out where I wanted the images to go and then I provided that work Word document uh, as a sort of dummy if you like to my formatter who then formalized it all into a print ready file so um, so your illustrator may be able to help you with the layout uh, or you may be an artist yourself in which case you'll you'll do all that um, you then need to find somebody who will create your print ready files. Now I use someone called Doug at a company called Lighthouse24.com. He's over in Texas, I'm in London but it's never been a problem and I do know other children's authors who've used him on my recommendation and been very happy with him. He's a He really knows a lot about print. I wouldn't say he's a design person but if you've an idea and you can give him a, a reasonable brief as to how you want it all laid out he will then create the print ready files for you. Um, you can also use Ali uh, and you should have a look uh, in Ali's database if you're a member of the Alliance of Independent Authors you'll find uh, formatters there um, and and or by the book choosing a self-publishing service um, which if you google that or you go to the Alliance of Independent Authors website you'll find links to that um, uh, those are vetted um, suppliers of services that are trusted um, and the reason I, I recommend Doug by the way as well is that he's very reasonably priced. Um, I should also say that the CreateSpace community is a good place to look for formatters particularly because CreateSpace is the world of print and actually that's where I found Doug and I think he calls himself Lighthouse there. Um, another way you might want to do it um, is there's someone called Joel Freelander and he has bookdesigntemplates.com and one of the templates he's got there is for story picture books. Um, I've not used it it, um, but it looks very intuitive. I noticed that the size of that template though is 8.5 by 8.5 inches. Um, now those are available as picture of paper sizes on Ingram Spark and Lightning Source but not on Create Space. So if you were thinking of using Create Space um, to create your children's picture book that size will not work uh, for you as far as I could see. Um, the other possibility you have is to do it yourself following the Create Space or Lightning Source or Ingram Spark instructions but I would just say that it really is only for experts and I'm about to show you a page which tells you why that's only for experts. So here is a screen, a couple of screen grabs. Here are a couple of screen grabs, rather, from the uh, Ingram Spark uh, instructions page for creating print-ready files. Um, it doesn't take much to look at it before you realise you really do need to know what you're doing if you're going to be creating the files yourselves. You can do it and if you're somebody who's good with InDesign or Photoshop or you know all that kind of stuff uh, and you're very artistic it'll probably be an absolute breeze but if you're a writer I would really outsource this kind of thing because even if you manage to do it most of it yourself you'll probably find something doesn't work out exactly as you thought uh, but so that was really just a little tip uh, there. 
So we've looked, you've got illustration costs, you've got your formatting costs, and then the other thing you need to think about is your clearly your print and delivery costs. Um, now what it will cost you to get your book per, the, the, the unit cost per book rather, will depend on page count, paper type, paper size, and, and your front cover finish, which with a children's colour picture book is going to be glossy, um, or in most cases it will be. Uh, the way you work out what it's going to cost you is you use these fantastic calculators on Ingram Spark or Lightning Source websites or other websites if you're using other suppliers. Um, uh, or you actually go and get quotes from companies for sh either short run digital um, uh, orders or for the offset litho quotes as they're called. Now it is cheaper to use offset printing, but the trouble with it is that you have to order very high numbers in order to bring your unit price down, typically around a thousand. Um, so therefore you could be, although you might get your unit price down to something like 150 or 160 or 170 a book, you've got to multiply that by a thousand uh, and ordering quite a big stock which if you're just starting out in self-publishing is a bit of a scary thing to do uh, which is why I would say stick with Ingram Spark or Lightning Source uh, and just go for the small orders to start with even if even though the unit cost will be a little bit higher. I'm just going to come on to that in more detail. This slide shows you um, the lightning source print and shipping calculator and there is the same thing on Ingram Spark and I'll show you this, that in a moment but this one I've just filled all the details out and you can see here that uh, on the slide you input what finish you want, what paper size you want uh, and I put 8 by 10 because that's what um, uh, Ferdinand Fox is. Um, I've gone there for the premium colour which I would definitely recommend if you're doing um, colour picture books with lightning source or Ingram Spark. Um, gloss front cover, 32 pages and then I've put in there for ease of reference 100 copies because that way you can see immediately what a unit cost would be for you of those books. So you can see there that if I order 100 copies of Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep uh, they will come out at £283.36 including delivery so that would mean my unit price is £2.83 or thereabouts. Um, now now one thing I would say is with Lightning Source and Ingram Spark you're not going to get what's called silk finish on your pages but it is a very nice quality of uh, interior white paper and although I ended up not doing my 500 orders through Lightning Source I think going forward I would follow this route because I've now found that nearly all of my sales are at school events, they're not through bookshops, the quality is good um, uh, but I had originally ordered through a digital printer with slightly more expensive uh, to get the better paper colour simply so that um, I would look my book would look the same on bookshelves uh, in bookshops uh, as all the rest of them but as I say I don't think you need to do that um, and so come and use these calculators. This slide is really to show you that Ingram Spark has exactly the same calculators as Lightning Source, and most people here um, out of the two would be going for Ingram Spark. Um, on the left, then, you have the um, print and deli delivery cost calculator again. I haven't actually hit calculate on that so it doesn't show the results but I've used Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep um, uh, sizes again and the results are all the same. Uh, then on the right hand side there's what they call the publisher compensation calculator and uh, Lightning Source has one of these as well and that's where you work out um, how much return you would make on each sale that is made print on demand direct to different stores which might order be, the, be that Amazon or be that other bricks and mortar stores that might order through Ingram Spark um, and the return you get will depend on which um, discount that you offer and so with Ingram Spark you choose between 40% and 55% discount uh, with Lightning Source you have uh, more flexibility uh, but you can see there that if you go for a 40% discount with Ingram Spark with, with Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep I would make 60p 
a sale. Um, so that's where you would play around to work out what your price might be, uh, what, what retail price you're going to set and what return you're going to make. And obviously retail price that you choose is going to, you're going to look what's in the market uh, for picture books of the sort that you're creating to help you decide that. Okay, so um, that's all on the calculators. Talking about paper quality, I just wanted to show you, I'm not really sure whether you'll be able to tell here, but I think you will, the quality of the colour from Lightning Source and Ingram Spark using their premium colour options is actually very good indeed, as is the paper finish. It isn't the silk finish, but it does feel very nice and soft to the, very nice and smooth to the touch, I would say. So um, even though it isn't the silk finish pages, I still think it's very good indeed. So that was just quickly to show that to you. Okay, so having looked at picture book basics and at costing your project, we're now coming on to the fun part, which is marketing your picture book. And over the next few slides, I'm going to give you some ideas as to how you can use your artwork to um, help you when you're contacting schools or bookshops, uh, helping them also promote any events you arrange with them. Uh, and also once you're at the event, how you can be creative with your artwork in terms of what you take along in the way of props and so on. Um, similarly, you can use this kind of artwork to help grab yourself a story with the local press. So let's have a look at what we've got uh, coming up next. So here's an example of um, the kind of slip that I provide to schools uh, when I'm going to do an event for them. And when I contact them, I similarly include uh, in the original email a couple of pictures from inside the book, you know, probably the ones that you're seeing here. So I don't just email them, say, I'm a local author, would you be interested in me coming in? I will pop a couple of those images inside the email to try and catch their attention because they're very busy. And if it's just an attachment, they might not open it. So I would certainly at least put your book cover in the email uh, body. Um, once you are in and you are arranging a date to go in, I then offer to supply them with the slips that they can send home rather than leaving them to do it because the um, the more work you can do for them, the, the higher the likelihood is that they will A, um, take you on and B, I think you'll make more sales if you're in control of the message that goes home. Um, so there you can see a some placeholder um, dates in there because I, I adapt and tailor each uh, flyer depending on where the school is and what my my sort of hook is. Um, so you know sometimes I've been to schools which are local to where I grew up rather than local to where I live uh, and so on and so forth but uh, I can pull this up whenever I'm going into a school and as you can see below at the bottom of the image there I then provide a slip uh, that the parents can fill out and bring back in an envelope again all the work is done for the school um, I also include a link to my author website hopefully to encourage them to look at my books for older children so there are a few ideas but uh, the main thing to remember is when you you put those images into that flyer, uh, make sure they're low resolution ones, uh, not the full image because that will make the file very, very big. Um, also another tip uh, one school said to me is make sure that it's suitable to print out in black and white as well. Not all schools will want to use colour. Um, another tip is I do find that them sending home printed slips you get a higher return on sales and if they just email them so if there's any way you can ask them to um, to print them um, that's what I tend to do is I don't charge for my school visits and the way I say it is look I don't charge for my visits but I do ask that you send printed slips home if at all possible um, so there we go there's a little tip for you in terms of marketing yourself to schools just a quick uh, slide here, which I thought I'd lost, but I've just found, just to show how I do include the uh, images inside the email text. So that's just an excerpt from an email that I sent. So you can see that uh, they could see straight away, uh, that was the book, here's Ferdinand Fox, this would be for reception, I would see them for 30 minutes. Uh, and then you can see the beginning of the next book below, Henry Haynes and the Great Escape. It's, and I say which age group it's aimed at, and how long the session is that I would normally do 
with the child. So that's that's just a, a little addition since I, I thought I'd lost that slide, but it's reappeared. Uh, with this slide, I just wanted to show you the sort of thing you can do um, to support events ahead of your visit, uh, perhaps to a bookshop. Um, obviously, this is using one of my images from one of my older children's books as well. But the very simple document on the left was for a book signing I was doing in Wimbledon Books, local to me, um, and you know it was to let people know that I would be there. I would be signing my books and making use of the artwork, and then um, the one on the right Right, the Secret Lake, one of the very first signings I did was in the Notting Hill bookshop, uh, sorry, the Notting Hill um, branch of Waterstones, and I supplied them with a couple of A3 posters um, just to sort of brand the book uh, and to mention that the setting was in Notting Hill. And so you could think of ways of um, using Photoshop or just taking screen captures of your um, artwork and putting it into Word if you can't use Photoshop um, to then create simple artwork that you can supply to help promote your event. And obviously you can do that also for um, ahead of school visits for schools to put up around the school um, so people remember that you're coming and remember to order your book. The other thing I would recommend doing with your artwork is creating a uh, uh, A3 particle boards. We have something here in the UK called Pronterprint, uh, and I email them uh, a PDF of my artwork and they put them onto these very light boards which I then carry around with me and when I go to school events or book signings as you can see here I was at Waterstones I can prop those up uh, and they can be put for, form part of my backdrop to my um, uh, to my event. Now in the terms of picture books I've obviously in fact you can't see them all there I've, I have got more I've got some from the interior of Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep which I obviously have there um, but the other thing I do at school events and this is a great tip if you're doing a picture book is I've taken all of the interior images about 30 of them uh, and I've got a an A3 color poster of each of those and so when I do my uh, event at the school I hold up for each picture when I'm reading from the story I hold up each picture so that the class can see the picture as I'm reading now obviously you can do that also on a PowerPoint I kind of feel that's a little bit less personal and you're sort of trying to read and press a button at the same time it somehow doesn't feel so natural so I quite like to just use the A3 color pictures so again this is the great thing about being self-published all these different things you can do with your artwork um, and you can also obviously give away posters that you sign, you know, when, when uh, at events and things like that because you own the artwork. Um, so let me just pop that on save. Another way that you can help uh, support your own marketing effort with your print picture books uh, is to supply shelf talkers if you are stocked in local bookshops. Um, here are a couple of examples. Here's uh, a couple of my other books showing in my local village bookshop, but also Waterstones uses them uh, here in the UK. Uh, I just went in and measured what size they were using and then offered to supply them and they sort of jumped at the chance. So what you can do there is if you have Photoshop or your Illustrator has Photoshop, you can easily create layers and use your artwork and then tailor messages on top of the artwork just to talk about what the story in the book is about. And, and here you can see examples with the secret lake and Eek the runaway alien, um, but there's no reason you can't do that with your own picture book. And I've just printed these out on very lightweight card at home, done that myself. I didn't go and use uh, the local print shop or anything like that. So there's another idea to help and show, well, another example of how to use your artwork uh, to promote your book. Here's another thing you can do to reuse your artwork if you're self-publishing children's picture books um, and that is to use some of the images for colouring sheets. Um, now my artist he works completely digitally right from the start and I don't quite know enough about it but what I do know is that he did find it it was fairly straightforward for him to create black and white versions uh, of some of those pictures and what I do is I have taken those images I've dropped them inside a word document and put a little bit of blurb top and bottom as you can see so that anybody whether it's at a book signing event in a store where I might have them on the table alongside my books or I might hand them out uh, at school events 
uh, to the children, to all of the children, so even those who haven't bought the book might take them home, um, they can, the parents will then see, you know, again, I'm trying to sell them the book, I suppose, uh, by a little bit of blurb top and bottom, and they can go to my website maybe and look me up and hopefully uh, buy books that way. So again think of ways to use your artwork to help sell your book more and even if you don't sell any more books as a result it's nice to know that uh, the children who didn't buy the book can at least enjoy, enjoy colouring in pictures from it. This is just to show you um, some of the A3 posters that I use for reading from Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep. Um, they literally are just printed off on a colour printer A3 size and I clip, clip them all together and I take them to all my school events and they've lasted for all my events. Um, so it's quite a, a nice way to stand in front of a big group and they can see the pictures clearly and I quite like as I said that personal touch of the paper rather than doing it with a PowerPoint presentation but of course you could do a PowerPoint if you wanted to. But the point being when you're reading your picture book to large groups they can't see the pictures so you do need something enlarged and this works very well in my view. Obviously you want to do everything you can to support your local marketing and to get your name out locally as a local author um, and one way you can do that is by contacting your local press and at particular times you might want to do that is when you first launched your book and you might be doing a book signing in a local bookshop um, or you're going to do a school visit and there's a special event for example it's World Book Day or some other relevant um, time of the year. Um, when you do so call them first, try to get the name of the correct journalist and then when you speak to them or with your follow-up email obviously give them your a link to your website and attach a press release where you give the, the what, when, where and any local hook um, and, and remember to mention where locals can buy the book in local bookshops because you know the, the local press will like that. Um, obviously include an image of the book cover and, uh, and perhaps from the interior and as far as you can write the story for them about the event that's about to happen or if you end up sending the story afterwards uh, if they didn't turn up again you know make it easy uh, for them to, to put the story in the paper. You may be lucky they may send a photographer along if the event sounds interesting enough and I was lucky enough for that to happen to me one year um, and I've got a little a couple of examples here of how local press coverage uh, can help you. And uh, anything really goes as far as local press goes. It might be your local newspaper, it could be a magazine that goes out to families. In our local village we have once a month, or so I think it's once every two months, something called Prospect. Uh, so I contacted them with my um, story of my visit to a local nursery school and you can see the coverage they gave it there. And in fact the story pretty much was word for word that the what I'd supplied to them. So that was me talking about, you know, make it easy for them to include a story about your book um, by writing it for them um, and if you are contacting them ask them how many words they want don't overdo it um, and that will increase your chances of getting coverage. Uh, I'll just show you one more slide with press coverage. Here's an example of some press coverage I got after a school visit and where you can see very clearly in that left hand image um, how the particle boards I'd used um, came into their own. Uh, I went to a local school on World Book Day and in fact uh, they were very interested because there was a young boy there who by the end of the day had actually written his own story using eye gazing software. Um, so he was fantastic. Uh, he was a little boy with cerebral palsy and who'd absolutely loved the story so much he wrote his own version of a fox story by the end of the day. But again, you know, I made the call beforehand to say it's World Book Day, I was going there. They came along, sent a photographer and um, there was the artwork um, supporting my event. This last slide is really just to show you some other ideas for marketing, how you can make use of your artwork on our obviously bookmarks for bookshops um, to put on their counters or to have at signings. The main thing there is don't put Amazon's URL on there, make sure it's just your own website's URL. Um, local promotional flyers where you might offer to do readings uh, at children's birthday parties for example, you might put those through the doors of families who live locally to you or um, let them uh, take them around to nursery schools. Um, 
perhaps you could there suggest that you know instead of a party bag they the children get sent home with a signed picture book if you go along and read to them um, I've done local library readings and publicized them using flyers in local cafes where parents go um, and in anything that you're doing um, include links to your website and mention that there are free downloads there if you provide them for example to coloring sheets or, or puzzles and so on um, so those are just some other ideas. Um, so I hope that's given you an overview of the sorts of things you can do to help promote your and sell your picture book in print locally. Um, I'm now going to have a very quick um, look at how you might want to think about turning your picture book into an e-book. So let's come on to that slide next. Finally, I just want to talk briefly about print to ebook or app conversion. Um, the great thing about being a self published author and hopefully owning the copyright to your artwork is that you can then use those digital assets to turn your book into an ebook or to a children's book app. Um, there are some great tools out there that you can use yourself to do this, provided you are very tech savvy and you have an eye for design. Um, otherwise, I would recommend outsourcing uh, to uh, somebody to do that and I've outsourced myself uh, to create an iBook and ebook version of Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep. You can see in the screenshot on, uh, shot on the right um, that's the iBook version. It's got word highlighting. Uh, you can see the red word highlighted there so I narrate and uh, the, the words highlight. Um, and then on the left hand side uh, you've got a screenshot from my interactive book app Again, I outsource to do that. Um, but uh, there are some tools now that have come along during the last year or so that I've, I've come across that you can use uh, if you're very, very tech savvy. And I'll be talking about those in a separate presentation, provided I can make the technology work. Um, anyway, thanks for listening today. I hope you found it useful. And please do go over and have a look at my blog, selfpublishingadventures.com, to find out more about uh, self-publishing children's books. Thanks for listening.